This week, SpaceX jumped ahead of the game again and facilitated the first ever commercial spacewalk with the Polaris Dawn mission. But also, this daring crew of privately funded astronauts have also traveled further than anyone else since the Apollo days, since over half a century. Now, this mission was so risky and the entire time it had me on my toes. But the billionaire bankrolling this mission, Jared Isaacman, supposedly spent over a hundred million dollars for this potential death sentence. I couldn't help but draw parallels to the Ocean Gate Titan sub that similarly saw a billionaire risking it all just to go on an adventure into the deep sea. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, let's talk about the Polaris Dawn mission. So SpaceX's Polaris Dawn mission was funded by Jared Isaacman, a billionaire who made his fortunes in finance. The mission saw Isaacman and his crew of three, his close friend Scott Kid Petit, who is a retired Air Force pilot, and two SpaceX engineers take a flight on a Falcon 9 rocket, which, by the way, only just saw an explosion in July this year whilst deploying Starlink satellites. They were strapped into a Crew Dragon capsule and headed all the way to the Van Allen belts. That's 1,400 kilometers in altitude. For reference, the International Space Station is only at 400 kilometers and the Hubble Space Telescope at about 550 kilometers. This is the highest anyone has ever been in over half a century. Now the Van Allen belts are these like donut-like shaped regions of intense radiation surrounding the Earth. It contains high energy protons and electrons trapped by the Earth's magnetic field. This makes them a huge hazard to satellites but also astronauts because this high energy radiation can damage satellite electronics and cause health problems for astronauts. To protect against these hazards, satellites and spacecraft are often equipped with shielding to block out the radiation and some will even power down any non-essential instruments to prevent damage. So then you ask, why would anyone ever want to go there? Well, these suckers wanted to do a spacewalk. Thankfully, they didn't step out in the Van Allen belt, but dropped back down to 700 kilometers altitude for it. But still, this is no ordinary spacewalk. This spacewalk was unlike any spacewalk we've ever seen, because unlike the ISS, the Dragon capsule had no airlock. So the entire crew was exposed to the depressurized spacecraft. This means that the entire crew, despite only two of them actually going on the spacewalk and actually exiting the spacecraft, all four of them had to don their special spacesuits. Now, although these look like the standard SpaceX spacesuits that everyone takes to space, they're actually very different. These are IEVA suits, or intravehicular and extravehicular activity suits. These suits are designed to be used both inside and outside of the spacecraft. They're designed for survival in harsh environments of deep space. They're pressurized, thermally controlled, supply breathable oxygen and then eliminate your carbon dioxide. They also protect the astronauts from radiation and micrometeorites, all while maintaining mobility. Look how flexible they look. And actually that was part of what they were testing up there, how they were able to move around in the suit and how comfortable it would be. But one problem, these suits had never been tested in space. This was the very first time and no one knew what would happen. I mean, the suit is made from fabric, for God's sakes. What if a seam is ripped? Well, first off, there would be a rapid decompression. The air inside of your suit would rush out into the vacuum, causing a sudden drop in pressure. Then would follow a potentially fatal series of events. You'd lose consciousness within seconds because of the lack of oxygen. Your blood wouldn't be able to carry enough oxygen to your brain and other vital organs. The low pressure would cause your blood to boil. This is known as ebulism, swelling up your organs and your eyes. And since the vacuum of space is so incredibly cold, you'd catch hypothermia and die within minutes. Now, since there is no airlock, the entire crew was subject to this danger, not only those on the spacewalk. On the International Space Station, the airlock maintains the air and pressure for astronauts and cargo entering and leaving the ISS. And this allows for a gradual transition 
of the pressure difference between the ISS and the vacuums of space. If the pressure changes too quickly, you can get sick or even die. It's like when you stand up too quickly and you get sick or nauseous, but a lot more extreme. Dissolved gas bubbles can form in your bloodstream and you can suffer lung damage or even paralysis. And if you do end up vomiting because you're sick, you're just gonna block the airflow in your suit and suffocate yourself. Bear in mind also that only Jared had ever been to space before. Nevertheless, the entire crew had been training for this for the entire two years. So everything from centrifuges to vacuum and pressure chambers and even deep sea dives, which brings me back to the Ocean Gate Titan mission. Why do billionaires all have a death wish? I mean, Jared literally paid millions to be a guinea pig and potentially die. And good for him for doing it. I mean, I appreciate it. This mission tested out the viability of the suits, which undoubtedly will have an impact on future human missions to the moon and Mars. The data collected on them will have big impacts for future space settlements, like their exposure to the radiation and all of the experiments that they brought up with them, which included these special contact lenses that actually measure the pressure in their eyes. You know, just in case they're about to explode due to the pressure differences. Data will also be collected on them for years to come to evaluate their rehabilitation. But does he really know what he signed up for? Well, of course he did. Unlike Ocean Gate, and like I mentioned earlier, they had been training for this for two years. And over the course of the two days in space, they were preparing for this mission. The astronauts had been purging themselves with pure oxygen to reduce the amount of nitrogen dissolved in their blood and tissues. Nitrogen, being less soluble, tends to form bubbles when pressure drops rapidly during a spacewalk. These bubbles can cause decompression sickness, which is painful, but potentially also dangerous. Oxygen, on the other hand, is more soluble. It's easily absorbed into the bloodstream, so it doesn't form bubbles as readily, so significantly reducing the risk of decompression sickness. Now, this wasn't something that was new. ISS astronauts actually do this, but they only do it for two hours, not two days. And this is because the ISS astronauts have the privilege of spending several hours in the airlock at a reduced pressure, and this starts off gassing nitrogen. But as you saw in the video, the Polaris Dawn astronauts completely decompressed their cabin in maybe less than 30 minutes. So a lot shorter than the two hours that the ISS astronauts have. Overall, the Polaris Dawn mission wasn't just about the spacewalk though. It was pushing boundaries in multiple areas of space exploration and research. It lays the groundwork for the future where private citizens can play a more significant role in space travel and in scientific discovery. As space exploration becomes increasingly privatized, we can expect many more missions just like this in the future and brings us closer to colonizing the solar system. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe. As an astronaut, I need space. Rockets blazing through the dark set the pace. Oh, I'll chase.